Good morning, everybody. So this week we have the 10X extravaganza, basically. We have two guaranteed champions happening, and we have my new personal best kind of on a full auto brutal team that I didn't actually know could go this high. Uh, but yeah, we landed at 70 million. It's not really a personal best, I don't think. But either way, neither here nor there, because today we're going to talk about the juicy summoning events, okay? Now, I'm going to skip past the 10X one in case you're just here for the guarantee, because this is a short story worth of actual 10X events going on. The guaranteed champions that are going to be involved in this are, on Tuesday, July 25th, summon champions using Ancient Shards while the event is active, and you are guaranteed to get Wyrenan the Silken by your 40th Ancient Shards. So if you don't know who this champion is, don't worry, you're not the only one, because to be honest, I don't really know who this champion is. I know they're in the Sylvan Watchers, I got an idea of who they are, but let's wait for this to actually finish loading and go over there and check out what we're going to be in for if we pull for this guaranteed champion. So Sylvan Watchers... Uh, wiring in the, okay, well, actually one champion I don't have. Uh, so A1 ability. Attacks one enemy, 40% chance of placing it, decrease attack for two turns. Nice. A2, fills a turn meter of all allies by 15%, also places 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns. And then A3 ability, revives a dead ally with 50% HP and 30% turn meter, also places a 15% continuous heal buff on that ally for two turns. And this can be booked down from a 7, 6, 5, 4 turn cooldown. That's actually really good. Uh, it's a single target revive. But if you're struggling with the Sylvan Watcher faction, then this could be a really solid champion for you. I mean, as it is, like, if you don't have the main champions up here, if you're really struggling with legendaries from this faction, she could actually probably be a fantastic option. Because as I'm aware, or as I know, I don't think there's any other res champions in this faction that are not legendary, right? Wyronin may be the only other res champion. We may have some rares, I forget. Um, I want to say this champion can... Yeah, so we do have the rare who can res. So if you're really bad off, I guess, maybe. Like I said, we do have the rare that can res, but you guys can decide for yourself on that. She does bring the increased speed as well, plus a turn meter boost, which is pretty nice. But outside the faction wars, I mean, you have champions like uh, Hykatoon, who also brings a 15% turn meter boost and a 30% increased speed buff on a three-turn cooldown. And hers, or Wyronin, is on a uh, four-turn cooldown. So kind of weird. When a champion who was released like at the beginning of the game has a similar but less cooldown ability. Either way, neither here nor there, I'm just the, the deliverer of this news. So on the 25th, which is tomorrow, we'll be having that event. And then on Wednesday, July 26th, summon champions using Void Shards while the event is active. And you're guaranteed to get White Dryad Nia by your 30th Void Shard. This event will be active for 35 hours. Now, we had a Kimptum recently. A Kimptum's a really fun champion. I'm not going to talk about him too much here. But Nia is a really fun champion, but also a really solid champion, especially for Hydra. Um, she's going to be solid for the Faction Wars, but I think she's going to be much better for Hydra, to be honest. I mean, depending on what you need for Faction Wars, I really can't say if she's going to be amazing for you or not. Because if you have champions like, well, Elva, if you have um, Orn, you're probably doing pretty good in the Faction Wars anyways. Like, I haven't been struggling whatsoever going through it. But that's not everybody. So what does, El what does White Dryad Nia bring? Well, she brings on her A1 an AoE decreased speed. Okay, this is a 30% chance right now. Books up to a 50% chance. 30, 40, 50. So 50% chance. If you have the Sniper Master, it's a 55% chance of placing decreased speed. It's an AoE attack. She's a Void Affinity Champion. So she's never going to weak hit. So on Hydra, she is so, so good. Like, I, had, I did a video recently using her on Hydra with a few other champions. Artak, we had Newt. We had some other free champions. So if you don't have Nia, she's a champion who I would maybe consider pulling for. Her kit is unique. Like she's one of the only champions with an AOE decrease speed that is also a void affinity. She, other than Krisk, I mean, Krisk is another one who has that. Her kit is not Krisk esque. I mean, in a way, I mean, ally protection. I don't know, maybe Krisk. Uh, either way, her A2 is actually really good also. This has some super cool synergies with Newt. So removes all debuffs from a target ally, then heals them by 40% of their max HP. If the target of this skill is not this champion, decreases the cooldown of all the target skills by two turns. So Newt can be using that max HP hit all the time. So on Hydra, if you want a head dead, you're going to have that head dead. Um, Newt is going to do max HP. Nia is basically going to reset it or get close to resetting it. And then he's going to go again and do it again. Her A3, 
I use it, I turn off on Hydra um, because it places ally protection. Basically, you're making her take more damage. I want her to be alive, so I don't want her taking any more damage. She also brings a strength in, but champions like Mithrala also bring the strength in, so I just turn this ability off completely. And then our passive is, is really cool too. Whenever this champion is healed, heals each ally except this champion by 20% of that heal. It's not a significant heal, but that's any time she's healed. If you have a Ugo on the team who heals, if you have um, any champion who's healing, she's going to be basically taking 20% of the heal, well, exactly taking 20% of the heal that she receives, and then spreading it to others. It's not an overheal, nothing like that. It's literally, hey, if Nia's healed, she heals everybody else by 20% of that heal. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, very solid champion. I'd say if you don't have her and you have the Void Shards, she may be one worth going for. I don't like hyping these events up, but if you're not looking forward to a guaranteed Void Legendary, which there could be one coming as well because we had a Kemptum into White Dryad Nia, so they're really pushing out these Void Guaranteed events, so we may have a Void Guaranteed Legendary coming up, but if you're not so worried about that, these could be very solid. Now, when you're pulling for these, what 10Xs are you going to be looking for? So on the 25th, is going to be the Ancient One, and 26th is going to be Nia. So here we go. On Tuesday, July 25th, we're planning to launch 10x events to summon the following champions from Ancient, Sacred, and Void Shards. So this would be on your way to uh, Wyrid and the Silken. So Kandrafon and Hef Hefrak. Those are the two champions from the Sacreds and Ancients, and a champion from the Void is Ithos. Ithos smacks hard. He's a really good nuker, very solid champion. But honestly, Kandrafon and Hefrak are the ones you'll probably be going for if you're going for the Wyrenin, the Silken, right? Um, so Kandrafon, one of the hardest hitting A1 champions in the game. He is incredible, brings an awesome passive. One of my most used champions in live arena, absolutely fantastic. Hefrak, also fantastic champion. He has a hard hitting A1, not as hard as Kandrafon, doesn't do as good in my opinion, but he's a very good champion. Also, if somebody on your team dies, he comes back with his passive, which activates his A2 ability, hitting everybody, extra hit if they're below 50% HP. Very, very hard-hitting champion. I have uh, plus one Hefrak, and I use him, but I definitely use Kandrafon more. Kandrafon is just tanky, so if you end up pulling either one of these champions, neither one is a bad one. Both of them will most likely get some use in your account. I also have Ithos. I don't have Ithos, but Ithos hits super hard. Uh, what faction is he in? Is he not there? Um, okay, I think he's up in High Elves. But Ithos hits super hard. Very hard-hitting champion. Though I don't see him as popular of a nuker as he once was, um, so as far as like arena meta, I think he's, I think he's had his days. Okay. He has days in the spotlight, not really here no more. Um, but he is still solid, especially in some, I think nightmare campaign farming. He can do that very fast. Uh, this event will be active for 24 hours. Also Wednesday, July 26th. This will be when you're pulling for white dry Nia. If you're going for her, we're planning to launch a 10 X event to summon the following champions from ancient sacreds and voids. We got our Suga war caller, very solid champion, Duchess Lilitu and Kyoku. So if you're going for this event, Arsuga is good. Um, I like her in some classic arena stuff. She's okay in some live arena stuff, depending on where you're at in the game. If you're at the lower parts of live arena and working your way up, Arsuga could get some use. I used her for a little while, but to be honest, you don't see her a ton at the higher ends. She's a good champion, though. She brings some good debuffs from her A2 ability, decreased crit damage, decreased attack, basically on nuke champions, and then decreased speed and decreased defense on champions who are more support type. She also brings some great uh, protection, ally protection and strengthen, plus a passive that basically makes your team very, very annoying to actually kill. So Rosuga is a very solid champion, but then we have the next two champions, and I'm not even going to, um, I guess, hide the fact that if you're going for these two champions, you're going for only one of these champions. You got Kyoku or Duchess. You're probably not going to want Kyoku. While she's a great champion, I don't have her. I would much rather have a second copy of Duchess than a unique copy of Kyoku. Duchess, I think, is probably on... Most players, if I don't have her, I want her list, right? Now, this is 10x, okay? Remember, 10x, the chance of you actually getting one of these champions is pretty low, to be honest. But Duchess is a fantastic champion. I'm not even going to go over her kit. You guys already know it. She makes the team harder to kill. She just makes everything easier, everything better. Like, Duchess, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic champion. And then Shadowkin, Kyoku, of course. Like I said, I don't have her, so I'm not going to give a whole breakdown of her. But she's a fantastic champion. If you pull her and you are not super late game, you can probably use her. Kyoku is a very solid champion, and if I did pull her, I would probably use her. Granted, I probably won't be pulling during any of these events because I have zero shards. After that, this event will last 24 hours. Moreover, this Thursday, July 27th, we're planning to launch a 10x event to some of the following champions from Ancient, Sacreds, and Voids. Rio Bone Spear, which is fantastic, especially for Shogun. 
Um, she's very solid for Arena. Uh, maybe not so much as before, but she's a good champion in general. She's been using some Sand Devil stuff. Rio is, an, is a solid champion. Would I pull for her? No. Would I be pulling during this TX event? No. I would be going for White Dryad Nia, possibly picking up her Suga. And then I'm not going to be pulling. I wouldn't pull for Rio. Um, from where my account's at, the chance of you getting a champion like that on a 10X, I wouldn't do it. Um, the content that she's used in, I think there's other champions that can work perfectly fine. I don't think she unlocks anything that you really need her for. She's great in Sand Devils and great in Shogun. Used to be very solid in Arena. I don't see her as much there. Sand Devils, Godseeker, and a da Damage Dealer is like the meta. Um, then Shogun, you don't need Rio for that either. So, good champion? Yes. Worth it for the 10x? In my opinion, no. And then we have Wither, the Crown, and Shimnath. I'm going to be honest, both these champions are solid. Wither, super annoying. Shimnath, uh, I haven't seen Shimnath used amazing. But she's a good champion. They're both good champions. To waste your shards on, to spend your shards on, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to say waste your shards on, not worth it, in my opinion. Not worth it to go for those two champions because, to be honest, there's probably going to be some guaranteed champions around the corner. They're really pushing out these uh, guaranteed events, the 10Xs. That's crazy amount of 10Xs. So, to be honest, what I would do during this event, you guys have sat through this video for 11 minutes. If I was going to go for something for my account, I think Nia is a solid option. Like, Nia is a champion who can fit into some of your teams. Like, for my Hydra team... I don't know if I have her now, but I have Krisk. I could possibly fit her into some teams, though. Like, I did have her in a team that I tested out. This team was one... No, this team at the bottom was one key brutal. Basically full auto. Has Nia. Nia is a very solid champion, especially if you don't have champions like Nekmo, champions like Krisk. Champions who can bring that solid, consistent, decreased speed for Hydra. I think Nia is a very solid champion. So for me, the most enticing one is the Nia. Um, as far as the Wyronin, I don't think she's worth really pulling for unless you really are struggling with Sylvan Watcher's faction. Maybe in that case she is. But to be honest, guys, either way, whatever you decide, I hope you get something good from it. I hope you pull a Duchess or a Siffy or the uh, new Shadowkin, new Shadowkin, new Undead Champion, Valkanen, which to be honest, oh, look, we're editing the video already, uh, but Valkanen. His portrait looks oddly like high definition compared to everybody else's. Like they took a picture of a person and put it in the game. Either way, guys, that's enough of that. So thank you all very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts and plans are down in the comment section below. And I'll catch you all in the next video.